A Sci Fair ISD senior says she was kicked out of school on Monday for not standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah, she is telling us today that this is something she has done for years, but it wasn't a problem until now. Janelle Bluto joins us live from the school with the details. Janelle? The school district has a policy saying that if you do not say the Pledge of Allegiance, you still have to stand um, unless you have a note from your parent. Well, this student's mother says she tried to write a note, but she was still told her daughter would not be allowed back in the school unless if she stood. Well, if you hear just one story today, this one is it. A picture of two local boys is going viral. It is on Friday. A Roseboro firefighter snapped a quick picture of the boys stopping to say Pledge of Allegiance as the flag was raised Friday morning. CBS 17, Sheena Elsie is live in Roseboro tonight. And Sheena, when the picture first went up on Facebook, no one knew the boys' names. Were you able to track them down? A Texas high schooler now suing after getting expelled for sitting during the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't think that the flag is what it says it's for, for liberty and for justice and all that. It's not obviously what's going on in America today. But does she have a case? Here to debate is the Blaze host, Lawrence Jones, along with defense attorney and Democratic strategist, Michael Starr Hopkins. Thank you both for being with us. Karen Smith now facing charges of child abuse and assault stemming from an incident all over the Pledge of Allegiance. The Boulder Valley School District PE teacher is accused of forcefully making a student stand for the pledge by lifting him to his feet by his jacket and removing him from the classroom. She was processed at the Lafayette Police Department and released with a summons yesterday. Developing tonight at 10 this year's NFL season has been marked by players taking knees during the national anthem and that display of protest has extended through Throughout all walks of our lives, including Colorado classrooms. Tonight, a teacher is on paid leave accused of assaulting a middle school student who didn't stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Liz Gillardi shows us police are now involved. Inside this Lafayette school, I pledge allegiance to the flag. The Pledge of Allegiance turned into a scene. Police say an Angevi middle school teacher allegedly assaulted a student after he failed to stand for the pledge. Well, I can let you guys know it's a crazy situation that happened here. This sixth grade boy says he started his first week here at East Middle School in Farmington Hills. He says he was in the classroom over here when he did not stand for the pledge. It's something that he always does, but this teacher would take no for an answer. They put their hands on our baby. The same thing you see on the news all across America came to our living room. Well, it's not just the national anthem anymore. Now the Pledge of Allegiance is under fire. In the Washington Post, Bates College professor Christopher Petrella claims, while the language contained in the pledge is not overtly nativist or xenophobic, the spirit that animated its creation was steeped in bigotry due to its origins in nativism and white nationalism. Here to react, our panel, Dr. Darren Porter, U.S. Army veteran and former NYPD lieutenant, Welcome to the most hated show in the black corner of the internet. That's right. I'm your host, Mr. Blows Your Minds. And this is Black Minds TV, also known as Black Minds News. And Mr. Blows Your Minds Show. And this channel is to report, articulate, transmit, communicate, relay, unveil, decode, spread the news, whether it's by news, video, websites, or quotes from publications. As I articulate these information, I ask that the creator of the universe be here, heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Because why? The troop don't need no partner. As a descendant of the greatest people who created the so-called greatest land in the whole planet, and as a descendant of that in the whole world, we give honor over here. And let me tell you what my motto is. I'm not going to tell you what I heard. I'm only going to tell you what I know. 
That's right, y'all. Another show, another show, another show. Hardest thing in the world is for the black hardest show. Well, let me put it this way. It's the hardest thing to do is to put a show on when you are the most hated show in the black corner of the internet. First and foremost, let me give a what's good to the fam and subscribers who participate and be watching the show to still give the brother something to look forward to. Uh, the fact I would be just doing it to it by myself. But I give some adulations and congratulations and some thank yous to all those who have it watches. Pass it by us. You know, it's like a grand opening when you come over here. You can go down the aisle, see something you like, hit that like button. If you see something you don't like, hit the like dislike button, hit a comment over there. I'll send a manager or supervisor out there. Maybe he can conversate with you. Maybe we can work something out, get yourself a discount or IOU. Maybe you'll turn on the next trip. Maybe you'll get a like out of you that time because maybe we have something that you might like. So just come back again, shop. Give us at least a second time or a second chance. Agents, nothing need to be said. I am the most hated show in the black corner on the internet. And if you don't believe that, ask yourself. A channel with 2.9 subscribers can't get past 100 subscribers. Channel done had quarter of a million views, 50,000 views, 30,000, 20,000, 15, 10. And every time it gets to a certain amount, the video gets stopped and all of a sudden now it's banned worldwide. So I must be the baddest show in the black corner of the internet. Who else can say that with a straight face? So, if you want to just test it out, just go and put my name in the search engine. Put in exactly as you see it, M-R-B-L-O-W-S-U-R-M-I-N-D, right? And you will have to spell it entirely and still it will not come up in the search engine. They have Mr. Blows Your Mind Show in the deadest of dead corner in the internet. And they think, obviously they don't care, do they? Right? They don't really. They don't care. See? And that's why I do the shows that I do. You know why? Because Dracula sometimes got to see himself. They say Dracula can't see himself on his reflection. But guess what? He can see himself. He just refused to see or acknowledge what he's seen. So anyway, you know, uh, again, since it's so hard for me to get shows and get them out there, and again, I want to thank those who do try to get videos for me to put into the show. The reason why I haven't done it yet is, again, I want to wait till I get back into the live aspects of it again. I got everything that you're sending, so don't think that I'm not seeing it. And uh, again, those who are sending uh, comments and things of that, if I don't get to it, it's not because I have not seen it. It's just that, again, it is the hardest thing for me to do to try to keep this show going, and I got other things going at the same time. So, today being February 18, 2019, and always every day is something going on, right? Again, as my, one of my analogies is, you could be blindfolded like on a pinata, right? Those who, you know, grew up in the wild, some knew somebody had a pinata, get in there at the stick, blindfold you. But this is, you have a dart in your hand, spin around three times on a map. Throw that dart on the map, and no matter where you land on that map, it's always popping on this planet. Well, today I decided to throw the dart in a couple places that I came up. Because, again, I won't do such of the longest shows for a minute, y'all. Just for the simple fact that, again, I don't want to put too much time for those. Again, I know it's hard for you to get it in. So the longer the show, the harder for you. So I'm not seeing the views. So I decided to say, well, maybe I just cut them in half and do, you know, one, two, or three videos instead of just doing one long one, right? So anyway, for those who might appreciate that, this is for you. And others, well, you know, you got to adapt sometimes, right? So I'm going to start the show off with, let's say this. Well, you know, again, this nation itself has a history that, uh, you know, people would like to um, believe that uh, 
certain aspects of people's hatred and anger and uh, some of their resentment seem somehow to just disappear. And when you bring up those aspects, they seem to be in denial of it or just to the simple fact that, well, it's kind of like, well, if we do it, so what? Can't, you know, you could do about it. Mm, all right. Well, it could be that what it is, right? It could be that's what you, you know, your interpretation of things is, right? So, you know, sometimes you have to bring out stories just again to just to remind some people that, you know, it's fine when, you know, everything is what they say, hunky-dory, right? Everything fine, hunky-dory. But then you have people on the other side of your hunky doryness. Yes, I said that. Like Webster Dictionary. I can make up words if I so choose. And so, you know, frustration of people in the action with other people. And again, I say an itching for a scratch. Meaning that sometimes some people just looking for a reason. They're already angry about whatever it is going on in their life. Maybe things didn't pan out the way they thought it was. Maybe they thought they were supposed to get a lot more privilege. And maybe just because they might be on the other side of the low end of the nation of people who they derive from. And so if they get a chance to encounter the opposition people, sometimes they let the, they let the cannons roll. So I've seen this story here. and I'm going to read it for you. And uh, let's start to show off with this. And it says this. A racist woman shouts slurs at black shopper keys her car. You know I'm going to say that again. A racist woman shouts slurs at black shopper keys her car. Now this story was done in the New York Post. Actually the story was done on the February the 14th, 2019. And this is how it reads. It says... A woman spewed racist slurs at a fellow grocery shop shopper in Massachusetts, rammed her with a shopping cart and keyed her car. The victim's daughter shared in a now viral Facebook post, Corey Blaine, 24, posted that her mother, Lola Jean Baptiste, 58, was in the Brockton Market Basket parking lot on February 1st, when another shopper snapped at her for taking the parking spot she wanted. Go back to Africa, nigga. The woman, described as a white brunette in her 50s with glasses, yelled when Jean Baptiste took the parking spot she wanted, Blaine posted. My mother kept walking and proceeded to go in and shop, Blaine added. Moments later, this woman comes up to my mother at the check checking lane and says, go back to Africa, you nigger. I fucked your car up, and I slammed her cart into her. My mom slammed back market basket security, told my mom to finish paying. Then they would escort her for her safety. But the irate woman took off before Jean Baptiste left with store employees and handed off a car to a male companion to make a transaction. David McLean, the head of operation for the store, told local newspapers the Enterprise. All of that information was handed over to Brockton police who identified a suspect, McLean said. Still, Jean Baptiste told the paper she was dissatisfied with the store's handling of the situation. They said they were escorting me out because they wanted me to be safe, Jean Baptiste said. I said... Yes, but the woman told me I just fucked up your car. I need to follow the woman before she leaves to see what car she has and take down her license plate. They said they are going to take care of that. They didn't want to get involved. What about you? Go talk to her. Instead of sending two people to send me out of the store, none of them went to talk to her or her husband. But in a statement, McLean said there's no place for racism and that we felt very comfortable turning over all the evidence we had to police in a very timely manner and expected them to do what they do best. Brockton Police Department spokesman Darren Durte 
announced Tuesday that in addition to property damage destruction of charge, the woman was also will be hit with a civil rights violation following a public outcry from the NAACP. John Baptiste, who is Haitian American and a married mom of two, told the paper she was rattled and unable to sleep for several days after the incident. I've been in this country for so long. I'm a U.S. citizen, said John Baptiste, a married mother of two. This has never happened to me. That's why it hits me so hard. I thought everyone was human. She was evil. The way she said it with this anger she had about someone she didn't even know. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I belong here. All right. So we see that uh, an incident took place. Looks like in the place of Massachusetts. <laughs> Massachusetts, right? See the story there. Somebody was uh, just we see that lady there, uh, Miss Baptiste, Jean Baptiste. I said Jean, but it should be Jean Baptiste, right? Uh, Haitian American, U.S. citizen. Uh, went shopping with a daughter. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, if, uh, you know, for those who have been in places shopping and it's kind of crowded, sometimes there's no parking. Or sometimes certain people just have preference that they like to be closer to the door. And so, again, you know how it was, you know, uh, first come, first serve, right? And so what we see here is that uh, this... A woman, uh, again, they did not actually disclose her name yet, but they had all the information. Isn't that kind of funny, right? I didn't read no name uh, of the individual, but yet you're saying the person who their name is, but we're not seeing anything of the individual who was doing all the bumping them yums like that, right? And so we see that the daughter decided to go ahead and do what they do in this day and age, which is to go ahead and get the footage. Again, I didn't find the uh, the Facebook posts. I tried to find it, but I didn't see it. So again, I had to give you just the uh, the words again, you paint it in your mind according to what was said. Now, so what we see is that uh, this woman here decided that again she was still pissed off. Again, as Robin Harris would say, pissedivity. So here she was pissed off and decided that you know what, you know, because you took the spot that I wanted kind of sound like a Rosa Parks situation. She wanted the seat. And because you wouldn't give up the seat, she in her all-white privilegedness decided that, uh, yeah, you might have getting the spot, but I'm going to have the last, la I'm going to have the last of this. So, again, you know, they did what anybody would do after they had a situation. You know, again, being in them cars seemed to be some very hostile situations when people drive. They just seem to just all bottled up and ready to just get it in because they're so focused on whatever they're trying to do or just angry about life. And so, again, uh, being butted in line. You know, I think that probably starts when you was in the kid in grade school and shit. Somebody butt you. You dead and ready to go fist the cuff just because somebody got in line. Button can start a riot. You know what I'm saying? And so this woman here decided to get personal with it, right? She decided, I'm going to find you, wait till you get in the checking line and come up to you, ram you with a car. Nigga, go back to Africa. Now, wait a minute. Hold on there. Wait a minute. Let me, let me tell you something. Now, again, as a DOS, a DOS or B A D O S, right? I know there's a lot of debate going on out here with a lot of people having a, you know, pros and cons. You got pan Africanism and all, you got all this going on. But again, I myself aren't against the, against the continent. I'm just claiming my lineage to where I am. That doesn't mean that I'm some kind of, you know, I'm a, anyway, I ain't going to talk about that another time. But anyway, so. Uh, here's a woman who's an Haitian American. She again, see, uh, she uh, she has Haitian in front of her American, right? So African American must mean it must be somebody else. But again, the way they cloak it, everybody get to get it. But again, the papers specify Haitian American, U.S. citizen, and again, can white folks tell the difference when you are a 
ADOS, DOS, or BADOS compared to somebody, again, you are a documented citizen, but you are from Haiti or from any other foreign nation. Do white people sense that and then come with this vitriol, fangs hanging, drool from the mouth, because it's kind of like what DOS hmm, might have their issue is. Is that what that is? Or is it just they're just angry because you're black? Now, it could be. Now, again, I'm not this woman. I can't say for a fact what it is, what, how she getting down. But I'm just saying that maybe a lot of people are having their issues. Not just the DOS. And DOS, again, other people are family, right? And I'm not trying to, you know, co-sign that anything that this woman did here again because, again, then another time, I guess, we'll be hearing the, the follow-up story. And again, the, the, the authorities should take the proper procedures to handle that in the right, correct way. We're going to say it honors our law. Now, so if this person was a DOS or ADOS, you know, BADOS, is it, would you do the same? I mean, some people would say probably would do the same. I'm just saying... Do white folks know the difference between dealing with an, um, a black American versus somebody they can tell a sense that there might be a little foreign to them, right? You know, because I think if you just, if it, if it's oozing the spirit that you're a black American, I don't think they do that. Now, they do do that, but what I'm saying is, now, if you're a little sophisticated, a little bougie, a little too educated one, your spirit is coming off a little different way. And so I think at times they kind of sense that and then, you know, they might do accordingly. But if you exude in that black American spirit like you got it in that eye and that spirit coming off like, huh? Are they a little hesitant to come at you like that? Hmm? So I'm just saying that, again, maybe something she felt that she's in a sense and she kind of said, well, she was going to push the envelope. So she decided to, you know, get into conference. Uh, tation with you, pushed your card up all up on you, you know, you did the right thing, again, defending your square, you you know, you got into it, and so here it was that the, uh, the store decided to intervene, and, you know, it's kind of like, remember when that uh, video, for those who are avid watchers of the show, remember the one that we did the story, or I did the story as to the sister that was working at McDonald's, and the, and the white cat called herself, trying to rough house up, trying to ragdoll her, and she, you know, gave him the two all beaties, uh, not beaties, two all beef patties with the special sauce. She gave it to him. And you remember how them in the back that worked with her were grabbing her? Well, that's what, you remember what she was saying? Like, why y'all grabbing me? You need to grab him, right? Well, that's what this, uh, the sister here is saying, this uh, Jean Baptiste is saying. She's saying, now why would the, score, the store, a little tongue tied today. Why is the store coming to confront me to tell me, okay, well, we're going to walk you for safety. Now, again, that's that's commendable, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, this is a person who's patronizing your store, right? And, uh, you know, you should have security in there, right? But, again, shouldn't you have accosted this individual as well, right? But this person is the one you more, and then, again, you don't even get, you don't say nothing, now, is it, is it because, again, it's, it's, it's more proper for you to come to the black person than coming to the white person because it can cause you more problems? Because, again, I think white people are more apprehensive with white people because, again, you don't be known who in their family and they can, you know. But when you're black, it's like, well, you know, they'd be surprised later on. Oh, shit, you was work for the DA. You was a, a court person. Uh, uh, right? They'd be surprised later. Oh, he was a lawyer and shit. Oh, shit. Right? So, in this case, you know, on coast, the white person, and she had a husband. Why didn't you go step to the husband? Like, man, what's... No, you didn't do that, right? So, y'all come here and say, walk out. And she said, well, hold on. Wait a minute. I, you need to get the information because she done said, well, she done fucked my car up and all this other shit. I need to know who they can just let her walk up out of here. So, well, no, no, we got that. We got that because, we, you know, she paid with the credit card stuff. So, we got all that. But, again, that could have been phony, too. She could have been on some scamming shit for all you know, right? 
Now again, now you got to worry whether the camera is working, whether it's a good, you know, the picture quality. At this day and age, I'm, I am very surprised that most of these cameras are so like, shit, 1980-ish. You understand? To the fact that it's like blurry. Right now with all this HD cameras, I mean, I'm surprised you shouldn't be, you should be able to read the back of the tag of somebody's underwear. That's how crisp and clean it should be. But anyway, so, you know, I myself remember a story. Again, it is this Mr. Blows Your Mind moment. I remember one time I was going to the movie. Man, matter of fact, I think the movie was Children of Men. Anybody seen that movie, Children of Men? And uh, this one had first came out. You know how movies are when they first come out, people go. And I, I'm not saying it was like no blockbuster, no shit. But I'm just saying, well, it might have been a Friday, Saturday night. I had a, you know, had a little piece with me. And I decided, well, let me go on here. We're going to go to this movie here. So here it is. It was packed. It was like kind of a mallish area. So, you know, ain't no parking. I just happened to, you know how you do it. You pulling up with somebody. You see the light coming on. They come back. So you stop. Right? So I stopped, allowed this person to go ahead, do what they had to do, their maneuvers to get up out the spot. So as I'm finna turn in, white woman come out of nowhere. Gonna get and stand right in the spot. And I'm like, I'm sitting there like, okay, you see, I'm going in there. Matter of fact, before that, I even had my blinker on to, you know, again, I'm again. What is it, 10 and 2 hand position, seat belt on, you know what I'm saying, all the proper shit a nigga need to do sometimes, you know what I'm saying, following the law. <laughs> so again, I had turned the blink on to let the mother who was behind me No, look, I'm about to go up in this spot, so don't be trying to make no move, because again, it was crowded. So again, as I said, I let them do all their movements, so I try to get in, and as I'm getting, I'm like, you know, getting the front end of the car, and then here comes this old white woman come jumping her ass in front of there, sitting there. Now, at this time, I got my big body 89. Mm -hmm. I got a big body 89, last of the big bodies, right? So anyway, she sit her ass there. So I wrote my like, look, are you going to get out of the way? No, I ain't. Well, this is my park. This is my friend's going to We're going to park here. I said, what? what? <laughs> Wait a minute. See, now again, if you from where I'm from, now in the wintertime, motherfuckers will put a chair out. I did it and dug up some damn snow and shit and put a motherfucking chair there. <laughs> damn motherfucker, go move that dead chair and get your head bust to the white meat, right? So you don't do no shit like that. But here in this case, this don't count. So it's like, wait a minute. Look, if you don't move your ass out of here, now again, you in a situation. I'm already quartered. I'm partially in there, but her ass is standing right up on the bumper. Now she want to play the old white person game. You know what that shit is. Oh, you hit me. I'm like, I ain't moving. I'm going to call the cops. Well, you go right on here and you call the cops. So I sat there. Person with me was like, nah, this fucking hell. no, uh, we ain't going nowhere. I'm standing right here. So we sit there about 10, 15 minutes. Here come the cops. Cops come over and stuff. Say, what's, what's this? You hear? Say, hey, you see, you see. Now again, I ain't moved. I stayed in the position the whole time. Blinker still on. Everything other than the car just turned off. Right? Cop come. He look at shit. He like, okay. I said, damn. She's sitting in the damn way. You know what I'm saying? I ain't no car. He like, well, yeah, but you can't be. He told. He said, you can't be. You know, you can't be blocking. You know? But my friend was gonna come back. He said, your friend in no car here. When he hit me, I said, nah, really? Now, look how I'm turned in here. So, where'd you come out of nowhere? He, well, really, I mean, right. If he's turned in there, I mean, you said you're trying to hold the spot for for the car. So, he told him, he like, you get your ass out the way. You, he said, what you trying to do? I said, I'm going to see this movie. I'm already motherfucking late and shit. So, we end up, because we got there late, I had to go left. I ended up after all that shit. Get back in the motherfucking ride. We went somewhere else. But the point was, stood my square, right? Cause I was in the right, and so that's that was the, that's the situation here. You don't get to call cobs, mm? you know that old shit. I got cobs. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, when you're the shorty and shit, you eating something, nigga hanging with you and shit. He hungry and shit. See you eating some shit, nigga call cobs on your shit. <laughs> Meaning cobs mean that he can get some, he can get a bite. You know what I'm saying? And like nah, nigga, right? And that's what she was trying to do. You trying to hold spots. You trying to claim shit. You don't get that shit. You know what I'm saying? 
It's first come, first serve. So you snooze, you lose. So here it is. You took it out of the, the, the you know, out of the ordinary. You went over dramatic with the shit. And then here it is. You, you getting all riled up, fouled and shit. Tell them up and go back to Africa. What, what's this shit? Wait a minute. Niggas been here too long to be coming out of white people mouth. Tell them I go back to fuck the Africa. What about some niggas say go back to Europe? Huh? Go back to motherfucking Europe. Why about some about some motherfuckers do some shit like that? No, why? Why is that? Because again, is that really your home either? So again, the wanderer always trying to tell a motherfucker to go somewhere when where you could really go if it, if if the nature nature of law was that every individual and people had to go back to a homeland, then where would you go? See. So, again, something as simple as a damn parking spot should have never had got to the level of that. But, again, some people could take a uh, uh, anthill and make the motherfucker into a mountain. All because of this free and I am and no one can tell me shit. Well, I don't, I don't get it. I don't see how y'all can't see that, you know, things changing and, and again, the inevitable. I, I just don't get it. But, again, if that's how you float your boat, that will make you go. Do what you got to do. So again, with this story, probably will come back around again to have some uh, ends to it. And so uh, again, um, you know, if it, I guess you know the evidence is all there. You had the, the, the little girl, she the, the little daughter, she did what she did. So again, you know, maybe here at the end of that, you'll be either paying some kind of fine or you know damages or some kind of something, right? You know, that's what sometimes you're just going to use the law. But it's just funny how some people could just take the shit to the extreme. And again, the psychosis of some people, this, this, you know, bratty ass spoiled shit. Don't get my way. That shit. See, that's what this done produced in you. And so again, as much as you try to make oneself to be, you know, I'm good and righteous. Like I keep saying, when you put all this shit on the balance of the motherfucking scale, you're going to come up insufficient. You know, like going to the, buying some shit in your car. Well, maybe you don't know, understand it, but we, my black folks, we know that. Come up, and motherfucker be, back when them cars first came out, shit, you was be nervous and shit, hoping that, that you had enough. You know, you done, you had a little limit on the damn car. They gave you $250, $500 on the car. You know, you've been spending shit. You went in there still trying to get some shit. Like, that shit, hope that shit get through. And get lucky. What when sometimes come out? Oh, insufficient funds. God, then let me put some of this shit back. Hmm? Remember that said, being in line and shit? I put shit back. Well, you know. Well, that's what's going to happen with y'all. See, you're going to come out insufficient because of all this bullshit. Y'all still ain't figured out. Change your shit up. Well, do what y'all must, right? Do what you got to do. All right, so. So I'd show off with that day. You know how it go. I give something, right? So, you know, that's how I go, man. It's just people, man. That you know, but then if you start talking about it, they get angry. I oh, know you always want to call racism. Real really, huh? Well, let's see now. Let's see if this really is a racism or just it is what it is. Well, so since I kind of already went there. Says again, these are short version shows. These are not going to be the long, like a band. I'm going to do some short so I can get some more work put out here, right? Try to get it going. So we're going to do a PSA. Then from the PSA, uh, we go right into the next story. So check this out, and she'll be right back. That way, it ain't working the way it's supposed to. Let's see. <laughs>
yo, there's like seven cops out here. They just blocked the drive through. The guy over there doesn't want to come out. I don't know why. Dude. Holy. Dude. Dude, they just fired on that guy. All right, so let me go ahead and give you the story to this. It says, um, police shoot aspiring rapper dead after found sleeping in car. You know I'm going to say that again. Police shoot aspiring rapper dead after found sleeping in car. This story was done. February the 13th, 2019, coming from the New York Post, and this is how it reads. 21-year-old spying rapper was shot dead by California cops who found him sleeping in his Mercedes Benz at a Taco Bell drive through with a handgun laying in his lap. The sleeping musician, Willie McCoy, or Willie Bo, was allegedly shot after cops approached the vehicle and he made a sudden movement. The Valley Hole Police Department said Tuesday. Cops were called to the fast food eatery Saturday at around 10.36 p.m. to check on a driver slumped over inside the silver Mercedes-Benz. The said that the car was locked and the transmission was somehow in drive. More officers arrived at the scene. The police tried unsuccessfully to open the driver's side door. They also moved a patrol car in front of the Mercedes and tried to move another cop vehicle behind it. That's when McCoy began to stir. The driver began to suddenly move and look at the uniformed patrol officers. Police said in a statement, officers gave the driver several commands to put his hands up. The driver did not comply and instead moved his hands downward towards the firearm. Six officers fired multiple rounds at McCoy from about four seconds, police said. Police didn't release the identity of the victim, but a man named David Harrison confirmed to the Los Angeles Times that McCoy, his cousin and aspiring rapper, was the person shot. You can't just keep killing us in the streets like this, Harrison said in the video posted on Facebook. My little cousin was asleep in the car. They shot him 20 motherfucking times in a motherfucking car, asleep. Police didn't say how many times officer fired inside the car. A 40 caliber shotgun loaded with an extra magazine that had helped been reported stolen from Oregon was recovered from the car after the shooting, police said. The Solano County District Attorney officers investigating the shooting. The officers involved were put on administrative leave. All right, once again, it's on, right? Driving, well, in this case, driving, but sleep. Hmm? Now again, we understand that police officers have a hard job out here to do. Now again, I don't know, again, maybe once upon a time people used to aspire to want to be a cop, but in these days, I don't know if that's, you know, what at least DOS, ADOS, and BADOS aspire to be, even though we probably need a lot of them because, again, now, again, if you live in a certain areas, then uh, I guess you get according to the population. But if you're in an area that is highly populated of DOS, ADOS, and BDAOS and all that, then maybe you may might be a little bit, could save your life, right? Because, again, let's look at the situation here. Let's look at the situation. So, you get a call about 1030 at an establishment in the drive thru Car Mercedes Benz, right? A Mercedes Benz, okay? Right? So, here's a Mercedes Benz, has an individual in the car that y'all have already identified that he was asleep. Now, as the story says in the article, that again, several police officers arrived. They even came to the point they said, okay, well, according to what they say, now again, we don't know whether that's true or not, but again, that's the report they're giving, is that the car in itself was kind of in drive, not in park. 
Would you have an individual who slumped in there who sleep? Now, that's ex originally that's what the car was about, right? So you putting cars in position so that the car can't move and move and roll. Now, again, y'all again have tried to get in the vehicle, tried to open the door, right? That you couldn't get in. You notice that he has a gun. Now, again, they said a 40 caliber shotgun. All right. Not a handgun, but a shotgun. My man sleep and then nodded off, right? Maybe he was under the influence, right? We never know, just speculating, right? Right? Tired. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? He was putting that work in, you know what I'm saying? And on the way back, stopped, got him some Taco Bell, you know what I'm saying? Eating, fell asleep. You know, people do that. So, here it was that y'all called it just as a kind of a welfare check, right? And you're checking on somebody, you know, like somebody, uh, you know, it's real cold outside or somebody ain't heard from somebody. You know, they call, can you, officer, can you go over there and check and see a welfare check to see if they're okay? All right. So you went over there. Now the car, I didn't hear was the car on. I didn't hear car idling. They, that's what they said, but they said the car wasn't in drive and park though, right? So we're under the assumption that the car was idling. Now, the individual in there nodded, right? Why is that you're feeling danger? Yes, I, there's a gun. Okay, I get that. I get that. So, somebody come out of dead sleep and wake up and motherfucker all up on them? Right? All up on them? Do he go? Maybe he, you know, maybe he was startled? Maybe he was startled, right? Maybe he was startled. And so, according to what you've seen in the video, we got to hear his, you know, play-by-play, -play, and we get to hear the shots. I don't think that video in itself does justice for the simple fact that, again, the distance, right? So, you know, they've been trying to pass the law about taking these... Uh, these these videos, right? The the police cameras off of the officers. And you have to ask yourself, why? Why would you want to take the video cameras off? Again, that, that helps you have more credibility to the situations that you're in. Seems like to me you don't want that there because again of the you know what I'm saying Foul plays that a lot of times that take place when we see these kind of cases. Now, again, in the case of having a, the police camera, will actually be able to vindicate you in this situation when it all comes out said and done, right? It will never vindicate you. Otherwise, it would be just to your interpretation and your reports, and it may not be, as again, we have seen in several cases, right? People will fabricate and collude to give, because if the man is dead, then, I mean, dead men can't talk. So, to keep oneself out of trouble, so again, you know, people will try to, you know, partner up so they can keep their boys up out of jail. Now, I'm just saying, I don't know what took place, but again, according to the story says that, now all of a sudden, the gun is coming up stolen. Hmm? You said that he made a sudden move. How do we know that? How do we know he made a sudden move? Because the unison of all the gunfire could be. Again, that's why the body cameras are necessary in situations like that. Now, again, we don't know why. Again, why would a young brother be riding out here not like that? Maybe he was on that surf and whatever, all that stuff, whatever. Again, and not off and, you know what I'm saying, whatever. I, we don't know. I, maybe he was just parked. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, okay, if he in the parking lot, not, not at all, is that a crime? Is that a crime? You know what I'm saying? I mean, is it just a simple fact that you black? You know what I'm saying? And that happens. Right, again, here's another story for you. Oh, uh, shit. I think, you know what I'm saying? I, shit. I had been playing some ball. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Played for a while, side man, I was a little tired, had been doing it all day, 
and sat in the car a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and just kind of listened to some music and that kind of just not at all. Had the car, you know what I'm saying? But I'm in a park where it's a parking lot. Popo roll up, flashing light, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, I'm like, you know. I, I, as again, I ain't going to tell you what I heard. I'm going to tell you what I know. So it's like, you know, like I said, start of them, you sleep and light on you. You don't know who that is. You don't know that's Popo. You asleep. You know motherfuckers up on you, right? So again, depending where you from, you might have that thing. Oh, well, they said that goddamn it, right? One or two, right? Okay, so, uh, so in this situation... Once I got the glare off to be able to see that who it was, okay. All right, what's good? He's like, you all right? I'm like, I'm good. And I said, damn, is it, is, it, is it against the law for me to be in my car just taking me a nap? He was like, well, no, it's not against the law. We just wanted to make sure you can. Okay, I'm good. He's like, can we see your license and registration? What? What? What, what for? Why do you need to see my license and registration? Like, damn, okay, I'm sitting here in the car. Okay, I know, again, as, again, let's look at the situation. You don't tell me nobody didn't run them license plates already? Mm, they ran them plates already. So, again, to the description, if, like, if that's his vehicle, the, the description came back, black male, certain age, you understand? You know it's a black man car, right? But, again, I understand the apprehensiveness of having the gun. You didn't know. But again, I think you should have did it away because again, the person's sleeping. You got to at least think in that. At least if I'm the cop, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, yeah, this motherfucker got a gun, man. So let's, okay, this motherfucker might just wake up. So let's kind of do this in a way that, again, the safety of ourselves. But you all up on it. So, I mean, you know, he ain't right for candy. Again, we don't know if he had permit to carry, maybe he had a gun, bought it from somebody, maybe the gun come up, stole it, he bought a bad gun, we don't know all that, but as a police officer, I think it's incumbent on you to come up with a way to make it so at least you're safe, and a gun can control distance, hmm? one gun in a room with 10 people can control all 10 people, you understand? Because unless somebody willing to take the first shot, second shot, sixth shot, you understand? Depending on what kind of caliber they holding, right? Unless somebody willing to take that, most likely everybody going to be cool. Nobody move. Nobody get hurt, right? So, again, in my situation, the same thing. So, we went through the whole willy boat. You know, just went through that whole shit. with get re registration, all that shit. Nigga looking to flashback, looking to see. I had I had a bottle of wine because I had, matter of fact, the reason why I came because I had came back from somewhere overnight. And was driving back, had played some ball, and then fell asleep afterwards listening to some music. Took me a little quick nap. I was like, man, I'm going to take me a quick nap and shit so I can go back to the crib. Man, Popo come put light and shit all on me. Okay, in my bag I had a half, I had a half gallon that I had from the night before, but it went open. Ain't no alcohol, ain't none on my breath, none of that. He like, well, what's that in the bag? So it's in the bag. What are we talking about? So you looking for trouble, right? You looking for shit. So again, here's the situation: was black man sitting in the car, got a gun, shit. Somebody was sitting there. Oh, I might be able to bag me one. I'm like, huh? So all six of them. Huh? It took all y'all for that situation for somebody sleep? Why so many cars for one man sleep? And that was what the car was about. Somebody found slump. Maybe he was pumping dead. But that don't seem like what you came there for. Right? I mean, shit, y'all probably, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, man. But again, this story will be, again, here this young brother lost his damn life due to the simple fact that, again, uh, situations. If a situation is there for certain motherfuckers who are just dirty and, 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 you, and you just happen to fit the scenario, they'll play along and go with it and use that situation to justify it. So you have to be mindful if you're going to be out here doing what you're doing. You can't be getting caught out here like that. You understand? 
Again, there might be some other elements to the situation. Again, you get caught out there, gun in lap or whatever. Maybe, you know, again. So, I'm just saying, man, you know, it's a damn shame. But that's what we live in. This is the kind of shit we in, right? And again, some people, again, read the situation. And again, they, they feel like they got off one. They done did some shit. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of them going to get again. So they got a nigga on his belt. Right? You know what I'm saying? So, Damn shame, young man, that lost his damn life. 21 years old, you ain't really did shit yet. You know what I'm saying? You just getting, to, you just, you just starting to get up a little bit and gone, right? Nobody gonna ever be able to understand the, the, the true significance of what really took place that night. The truth ain't gonna never be really told what happened. Only the day of inevitability when they had to deal with that situation at that time shall they deal with it. So we're gonna move on, right? Well, I was at that hour mark. Again, these are the short versions ones. So, again, this authority, right? So, here it is a situation where it seems like the authority is there. Just like when we look at the, the grocery store, the authority, right? The white woman is the authority in a situation that just because she couldn't get what she wanted, her being white, I'm the authority and I'm upset with you. And I'm angry and I get to do what I want. Police situation, again, the scenario, again, questionable because, again, man got gun in the car. Young man got gun in the car. He sleep now. The call is that somebody slumped in the car. All right. So it's kind of like a welfare check to see if everything good. And somehow end up, man, get gunned up. You seen it, heard it right there in the video. So authority. You say, well, you didn't put his hand. His hand was moving. Authority. Right? So white authority with black folks is the issue here, right? Black authority, when black folks are not succumbing themselves to white authority, is threatening. It's a problem. Subdue so the threat. So what happens if that case we got a black woman, then we got a young black man, but our children exempt? Hmm. Our children exempt? Well. Let's see. Our children exempt from the situation. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm gonna play a couple of this here because, again, uh, this is the, this is what this this is this uh, was primarily on right here, right? So here's, uh, we're going to go, let's see, should I go all with them? No, we should go with all with them. Let me go run them back to back to back to back to back to back to back. Hmm? Let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm asking the question, are children, black children, exempt from white authority? Some people say, well, it's not because they're white. I mean, these are they're police officers. Uh, this one is just a you know citizen. Okay. Uh, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. So, again, sometimes some people, again, some people are more, you know, we have spiritual people and then we have the physical. Physical man versus spiritual man. Spiritual people understand what I'm talking about. It's physical people who don't understand what the hell I'm talking about. Now, you fill in the blank who I'm talking about, right? So I have to give it to you so that you can see it, because otherwise you'll you, you, you'll deny it, right? So let me go ahead and show you this and run it in the rendition as it comes. Um, maybe, yeah, I might even do that. Let me go ahead and uh, let me do that up in, uh, in here. Do it up in here. And do it up and do it in here. All right, so we're going to do it like that. So I check this out. That will be right. Tonight at 10, this year's NFL season has been marked by players taking knees during the national anthem. And that display of protest has extended throughout all walks of our lives, including Colorado classrooms. Tonight, a teacher is on paid leave accused of assaulting a middle school student who didn't stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And Liz Gillardi shows us police are now involved. Inside this Lafayette school, I pledge allegiance to the flag. The Pledge of Allegiance turned into a scene. Police say an Angevine Middle School teacher allegedly assaulted a student after he failed to stand for the pledge. The teacher, Karen Smith, is a 20 year veteran with the district. The school website says she's a physical education teacher and cross country coach. Nationally, we've seen protests like NFL players refusing to stand for the anthem, a symbol of defiance in the name of racial inequality and police brutality. How 
So it's not exactly surprising that such a public display of protest would make its way inside our classrooms. But the pledge is not mandatory. A school spokesperson says any student can opt out and they don't have to give an explanation. The principal sent out a letter to parents telling them Smith is on paid leave. It did not mention allegations of an assault, only saying a substitute teacher will be working with PE classes after an incident at school. Police say they'll continue to do interviews and follow up, trying to figure out how the pledge led to an alleged assault. Liz Gillardi, Denver 7. Well, I can let you guys know it's a crazy situation that happened here. This sixth grade boy says he started his first week here at East Middle School in Farmington Hills. He says he was in the classroom over here when he did stand for the pledge. It's something that he always does, but this teacher would take no for an answer. They put their hands on our baby. The same thing you see on the news all across America came to our living room. Brian Cheney was up in arms after his son came home with some disturbing news. He says his son, 11 year old Stone Cheney, told him a teacher got mad after he wouldn't stand for the pledge. He said during the pledge, a teacher just snatched me out of my chair. And I said, snatch you out of your chair. And I said, I said, what did, what did she say? He said, Dad, she didn't say anything. Stone says it happened last Thursday while he was in homeroom. Everybody was like snickering after it happened. So I just kind of put my head down and continued class. The next day, Brian says another teacher called him out for not standing. Screaming and yelling at him during the pledge, telling him to get up. Do you have written permission to be seated? Why are you sitting? He explained to her why he was sitting. He told her he doesn't uh, pledge to a flag. He pledges to God and his family. Stone says he's been sitting for the pledge since second grade after his father explained why he had a choice. They've never had an issue until now. All the people who go out and fight for us, they fight for freedom either way. So I could stand or sit whether I like or not. Brian addressed the school board this week. For him to be violently snatched out of his chair by a lady and then him to tell her that he doesn't stand and her to just glare at him. It's wrong. It's a violation of his civil rights. The district says they're investigating the allegations. We respect the rights of any individual to make personal choices around uh, issues of faith and, um, and belief. So we're disappointed that we're even having a conversation. Now, the district says that they have placed a staff member here at East Middle School on administrative leave. They wouldn't say who that staff member was. Now, they also are trying to figure out a way they can possibly bring up this type of discussion with their staff members because it is becoming a national issue, Carolyn. I know it is, but there must not be any kind of written policy, especially if this young man has been doing this since second grade and has never had an issue in other school districts. And I know they just moved there, but what did Mr. Heitch say? Is there any kind of written policy about this or they're just going to discuss it and come up with something later? Carolyn, actually, he says that there is, that they are supposed to be respecting the beliefs and the rights of the students and other staff members as well. But the problem is, for some reason, these things keep on happening. And that's why they're saying they're going to probably have to take it a step further by just offering that, that education, that training to make sure that teachers and, and staff members and even students understand how important it is to respect those beliefs. Absolutely. Sci-Fair ISD senior says she was kicked out of school on Monday for not standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Yes, yeah, she is telling us today that this is something she has done for years, but it wasn't a problem until now. Janelle Bluto joins us live from the school with the details. Janelle? The school district has a policy saying that if you do not say the Pledge of Allegiance, you still have to stand um, unless you have a note from your parent. Well, this student's mother says she tried to write a note, but she was still told her daughter would not be allowed back in the school unless if she stood. This is annotating an article. It's her English homework that she finished Monday night. She was early. It wasn't due until Wednesday. So basically taking notes on an article to answer questions to it. But now it's late. And then the pledge came on and they both stood. And then I didn't. And she asked me to and I said I wouldn't. And she said, well, you're kicked out of here. 
India Landry is a senior at Winfern High School. On Monday, she was sent home after the Pledge of Allegiance. I've never been to a school where I was called to come get my child and no one would talk to me about what's going on. Her mother, Kizzy, says later the principal finally did talk to her. I would love for my daughter to be able to have to be able to exercise her rights as well. Kizzy recorded what the principal told her. Telling me that um, she can't come to my school if she won't stand for the pledge. It's something India has done for as long as she can remember. I don't think that the flag is what it says it's for, for liberty and for justice and all that. It's not obviously what's going on in America today. It's never been a problem until now. They were making rude comments saying this isn't the NFL, you won't do this here. Mom says they've tried to work it out, but then the district began citing India's grades and absences. All of a sudden you have all these issues with my child, but I'm like, if, if it was like this, you would address this a long time ago. Months away from graduating, India says she may only have two options, stand or get her diploma. She knows her decision. I wouldn't stand because it goes against everything I believe in. The district has responded, saying a student will not be removed from campus for refusing to stand for the pledge and say they will address this situation internally. Now, we are only playing a portion of the recording with the mom speaking because the school has not yet confirmed the conversation with the principal. We also reached out to civil rights attorney Randall Kalanit, who says this is a violation of India's First Amendment right because the school is public and therefore treated like a government. Mia? All right, we'll see how this is resolved. Thanks so much, Jeanette. Well, it's not just the national anthem anymore. Now the Pledge of Allegiance is under fire. In the Washington Post, Bates College professor Christopher Petrella claims while the language contained in the pledge is not overtly nativist or xenophobic, the spirit that animated its creation was steeped in bigotry due to its origins in nativism and white nationalism. Here to react, our panel, Dr. Darren Porcher, U.S. Army veteran and former NYPD lieutenant. Dr. Rebecca Grant worked in the offices of the U.S. Air Force. And Richard Fowler, Fox News contributor and Democratic strategist. Welcome to you all this morning. Uh, Darren, I will start with you. So when you have a professor teaching kids and, and writing an article in the Washington Post that the, the Pledge of Allegiance now is out of bounds, what do you say to that? Well, I think it's problematic. The Pledge of Allegiance was written at an imperfect time by imperfect individuals. When we take in consideration the Pledge of Allegiance, the U.S. Constitution, and the National Anthem, they were, at that time, we have evolved in a far greater society. I'm a prior Army officer and I'm a prior NYPD lieutenant. I have, I have come in every day under the Pledge of Allegiance, and I see it as a unifier, and I think it's something that we need to progressively see as something that brings us together as a nation, and we need to look at it as such. So, Richard, I'm putting your hand over your heart in your classroom, pledging allegiance to the country that gives you so much. Uh, what could possibly be wrong with that? Well, I think Darren is right to say that, um, you know, these these three documents are created at an imperfect time in our history. But I think to go a little bit further, I think if we're going to use, you know, the Pledge of Allegiance and the anthem as our two sites is what makes a patriot, I, I think that's what's problematic. And I think we should speak to that as a country because just because you don't happen to put your hand on your heart when you say the pledge or you happen to kneel because you're, pra you're protesting racial oppression, it doesn't make you un-American. And I think that's sort of a part Part of a large debate that we're having in this country that we shouldn't be having because I don't think that ju that doesn't define what a being an American is because of two just two two things right being an American is more than just two things being an American is how we live every day how we go to work how we contribute to our society how we help our neighbors that's what makes us that's what makes us authentically American well, not because we pledge to a flag or we sing the national anthem sure but Richard people go to work and they have families and they do things in other countries but if you but if they don't say the pledge uh, they may say a pledge to their own country we say a pledge to ours Re Rebecca give us give, hold, before we get back to you Richard give us some context on this pledge uh, you know 
what, what was the origins of it? What was the reason for it? Why do we say it? Right. Where did these college professors come up with this? So the origin is, yes, this was a period of defining America as a nation. We created national parks. The next year, America the Beautiful was written. Are they going to come after that next? So every word in that pledge is universal. It goes back to our revolution, goes back to the French Revolution. And I like all those words. I like nation, like I love our national teams at the Olympics. I love allegiance liberty, justice for all, and I even like under God. There is nothing in that pledge that I don't want to sign up for every morning. I'd sign up for that every morning. Darren, Darren, is there anything in that pledge that we should not be signing up for, to her point? I disagree. I think that we should leave it as it is. Um, we're Americans, and ultimately that, that's what the benchmark of the pledge is. It stands for nationalism for us as Americans. And every day that I look at that flag and I salute that flag, I give thanks and I pay homage to not just the Pledge of Allegiance, but the national anthem, and I'm very proud to be an American. Rich, Richard, to you, the professor who wrote this article, the, the title is of this professor is Intellectual Histories of Race and Resistance, a professor of Intellectual Histories of Race and Resistance. So is this not an extension of people who see themselves through the lens of identity politics or racial politics as opposed to what should unite us, knowing we're an imperfect country, but ultimately, if, why can we not pledge allegiance to this country that has given us so much? Well, I don't think that's what this professor is saying at all. I think the idea that the pledge says, uh, liberty and justice for all uh, is something that we should thrive to. We should thrive towards as a nation, and that's what we've always done as a country. Is we thrive towards liberty and justice for all, and we should continue to work towards that. But it means that we all have to work together to make sure that we have liberty and justice for all, and not just a chosen few. And so that requires that everybody work towards that, not just Democrats, not just Republicans, not just Independents, but all well, Americans. And when we see an injustice, or when we see somebody not getting liberty we should all fight to make sure that everybody has liberty and everybody has justice and that's what this is a, that's what doctor, this is about dr uh, richard very briefly richard says that it's for the chosen few is the pledge for the chosen few or for that's all? not what i said at all the pledge is for all of us it's your pledge you say it how you want to you can't compel that speech Say it to the flag and have your own thoughts about it. It's for but all that, of but us. That's, but that's not, let me be very clear, that's not what I said. I well, said that said we it, believe it benefits a chosen in liberty few. and justice for all, not just for a chosen few. And we should fight to ensure that we have liberty for everybody and justice for everybody. That's very different than saying that it's for just a chosen few. That's well, the spirit of the pledge. That's the, the spirit the, of the, the pledge. The debate will continue and hopefully our schools <laughs> keep saying this pledge regardless of what a professor of intellectual histories and race and resistance has to say about it in the Washington Post. Thank you, Dr. Porcher, Richard Fowler and Dr. Grant for your debate this morning. We appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. All right. So, I don't know why this thing is doing the way it's doing it, though. All right. But anyway. So, I'm going to give you the story that was done. It says, Florida boy 11 arrested after refusing to recite racist pledge of allegiance report. You know I'm going to say that again. Florida boy, 11, arrested after refusing to recite racist pledge of allegiance report. This story is coming from Fox News, February the 17th, 2019, and this is how it reads. A Florida middle school student was arrested earlier this month after allegedly getting into a confrontation with school officials and a law enforcement officer following reports that he refused to stand for the pledge of allegiance. 11-year-old 10 to 6th grade at Lawton Childs Middle Academy in Lakeland. He had been charged with disrupting a school function and resisting arrest without being violent, both misdemeanors. The February 4th incident began when the boy allegedly told his substitute teacher he did not want to stand for the pledge because he viewed the American flag as racist against African Americans. In a handwritten statement to Polk County Public School, the teacher reported telling the boy why if it was so bad here, he did not go to another place to live. She said, he then said, they brought me here, according to Bay News 9. The student was arrested by a school resource officer after he refused to follow commands and call school officials racist. Report said he has not been identified by the school or police a Lakeland police spokesperson declined to comment on the matter the Ledger newspaper reported. 
The boy's mother told the news station that if she, the teacher, felt like there was an issue with my son not standing for the flag, she should have resolved that in a way different manner than she did. Kyle Kennedy, a spokesperson for the school district, told the paper that students are not required to recite the pledge. He said the substitute teacher will no longer be working with the district and that he could not comment on the student's discipline. All right, so prior to that, I gave you the rendition of there were stories prior to today. This story here being done yesterday, the 17th. And it seems that we see that the issue seems to be that children, African-American, DOS, or black children in general, who in their own spirit has decided that they did not want to pledge allegiance to the flag. Now, a lot of people will say that that would be mutiny on the bound, right? That this here is a lack of respect for authority. Or is it just a position that black Americans in this land and the symbolicness of what the flag represents as the mantra? Now, again, some people will say the patriotism is about military. Black people have always been patriotism and fought in wars in this land. Let me say that again. From the inception of historically of our encounter, black folks, black Americans, DOS, ADOS, BADOS have always been even when they were in the position of servitude, slavery, were acclimated into the military to fight to be reinstituted back into slavery. So to say that black Americans are not patriotic is chaotic. It's crazy. It is a lying statement. Who has contributed to this country more than black Americans? No one. No one. But through the history of what has transpired, and children in school are reading, they have more access to information than those prior to. And for the simple fact that the NFL did take the stance that did become a wave in the country, and just by ironicness, we see that the NFL had opt out and allowed to settle, which again, if it was about what the NFL was standing for, money should have not have been an issue. It should have been about the principle. But again, forcing someone to uh, to have allegiance to something that is in opposition to its own existence. Don't give me the words that go along with the ideology. Let's look again as they say. It says works. Huh? It says faith without works is dead. So in this case. The words without the actions is just nothing but some words. Oh, poetically prose, it says what it says, but the actions of what it stands, the symbolism and the wordage has not played fair in behalf of the other people as the one individual in that video talked about special for some. Then he had to recant that and say, well, I mean, it means for all, but again, the way that everything is done, it doesn't have the same meaning. And so here's the people who know that what done transpired in this country, the injustices that have taken place time and time again, the disenfranchisement that has been laid, the laws, and as a child and children are truthful. Until they are tainted with grown-ups with the illness that some grown-ups have. 
So a child took it incumbent on themselves as you've seen the little girl, as you've seen the little boy, and then you've seen another one. And you see who was it every time had an issue? White women who were the teachers. Forcing them because, again, your, your reality in this country are different from another people, from another perspective. And you don't. And everybody seems to not want to give us any, any, as if what we don't know what we're talking about. So, you know, it's funny how y'all keep perpetuating this and trying to, again, slide off with the fact. Let's just say what happened with the Colin Kaepernick situation. But they're not going to disclose the collusion they say allegedly right they're just going to leave it to the settlement and not being being gagged not to speak about it but to force people against their belief as you said there's religious belief and I don't, shit you just your belief period that something that is against you why do I have to be for it when it is against me and it's obvious to us that it is against us. It is not as what it says in the acclamation of the words. It is just words that have fallen dead to people who don't really, who, who, who again need some protection of status. They really need a protective, a protection that has never been afforded to them since they've been so-called emancipated. But they're supposed to pay allegiance to something that, again, a lot of times what happens is you, when you go up by the places where we come from, parents who are abusive, dirty, no good, a lot of times the children love their dirty draws, right? And so... What happens when that child comes of age and understands that the dysfunctionness and the abusiveness of the parent don't want to be like you, don't want to follow nothing like you. Don't matter what the words that are coming out your mouth, it's the actions that you display that makes the child say, I'm not fucking with you. But the parent and his abusive and dysfunction and sick self will still say, do it because I said so. But as it said in religious, I don't bow to you. I give a grace and honor to the God that created me and you. Now, you can worship what you want to, but I know who we worship. And we and that in itself is manifested before you. So you can keep doing that. And keep trying to use them children because you're seeing that the, the, as the Willie Lynch letter said, the phenomenon that the creator has put in is manifesting itself. That all that you keep trying to push and feed and make a reality, we know it's not real. We understand that, again, trying to play us as if we don't understand that children who are honest and truthful will tell it like it is. And so you would take an 11 year old boy and try to give him and ruin his life because he didn't want to pledge allegiance because you felt he should. That just go to show you the psychoness and the craziness of people. You take things and you believe because the way you see, that's the sickness that is the unilateral way of life you see, but you can never walk in the shoes that we walk in. You probably wouldn't even can take it. We already see what you're already having a problem. Hmm? So, damn shame. We are as patriotic and more loyal than most of other people who claim it. We're giving more. We give so much that other people come from other places here and they benefit when we still in the muck and mire and still don't get the benefit. But we that's the kind of people we are. We are the ones that we are the coat that you walk over on when again, when they say the gentleman lays the coat down so the woman can walk over. We are the coat. 
and yet you still keep doing it. And you keep trying to make us seem like something is wrong with us. The vampire can't see itself in the mirror. But the creator said to tell you. He see you. He know who you is. You can't play that with him. And he see it. And he knows it. So you go ahead. As CJ. What say CK Lewis said. Whee! Enjoy it. Enjoy it. But you ain't got long. He gave you the time to change your ways and you won't do it. So now that you see that the young ones are saying they're not buying it no more. All the holes, all the strengths are coming loose. Because the time has come. It's not about being unpatriotic. It's about the, the hate and the slyness and all that that you do under the guise of pretending to smile and anyway so let me let, let me let, let me you tell me what you think how you feel now a lot of people will be ruffled under the feathers because they believe that you're being unpatriotic no one is against no military most of our military, most of the people in our families fought in the wars like your people supposedly have fought in the wars if you ain't new to Ellis Island. Mm -hmm. You've been here as long as we've been here. You can't talk that shit to us. We was here. We, even when we were slaves, we were still in the fucking war. Huh? Just because you have shit, what you want to say, these organizations and shit that talk about the daughters of the confederate and all that shit well, we got them too, we just don't get the honor of it, and we don't hold that with that high esteem because again we still haven't got everything first we need an official apology don't we when you gonna do that so anyway this is Mr. Blows Your Mind coming with another show first of all I want to thank everybody who sat down and uh, watched the show Maybe, I don't know. So you know how it is, y'all. Do it and get it out of here. Till next show, peace, love, hair grease and all that, man. I tell you, man, it's, 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 it's crazy, man. You, you know, these people, man. It's, it's, it's a shame how y'all do things in the name of, you say, good and wholesome, but can't see your damn self for the shit you do. And then you get angry because somebody tell you the goddamn truth. Be angry. Because it says that uh, all that, again, fakery and posturing and pretending. Mm, okay. Portions of the following program may be unsuitable for younger or more sensitive viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Remember, the enemy has only images and illusions behind which he hides his true motives. Destroy the image and you will break the enemy. I'm here to tell you tonight that the businessmen the mayor of this city, the police commissioner of this city, and everybody in the white power structure of this city must take a responsibility for everything. Luther and I, and everyone in this arena tonight, are unified by the same great American values. We're proud of our country. We respect our flag. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag? They say, get that son of a off the field right now. Out. He's fired. He's fired! Race is when you use your power and influence to subject people into inferiority. Utterances can be racist. Look around you, man. They own this shit. 
They're on this couch you sitting on. Them shoes you got on your feet. This building. This school. This country. You. We're behind enemy lines, dog. So you must first of all remember that this system was not originally designed with black people in mind. Right on. was not prepared for black people to in the end begin to demand their rights and an equal share in this country which they died for. Hey, and we definitely are not going back to Africa. In the church we used to sing the song, Good News, the Chariot is Coming. While you sit here today knowing that you have come to hear good news, you must Realize in advance what good news for you might be bad news for somebody else. Right. What good news for the sheep might be bad news for the wolf. They say, oh, things are getting so much better for you. In 1849, it was hitting blacks on the head 100 times a day. In 1990, they hit them 48 times a day. Isn't it better? Oh, it's got to be better. You're, you're, you're saying 52 blows. The only purpose of most black Americans on earth today is to destroy. I think that's noble. Italians love Italians. When Irish love Irish, but when a nigga loves a nigga, it's an unpardonable sin. They are. They have blood in their hands. When we say they have blood in their hands, we are not saying him, George Bezos, went and killed. But white people colonized us. They dispersed us. They enslaved our people. They sucked our economy dry. They are still sucking it dry even today. That's why people, Tony Blair, George Bush, and Napoleon Bonaparte, Leopold, Adolf Rick, Benjamin Netanyahu, all white people, they are the same. They are racist and they are full of hate. I've been waiting for you. You have many questions and though the process has altered your consciousness, you remain irrevocably human. There go some of my answers you will understand and some of them you will not. Concordantly, while your first question may be the most pertinent, you may or may not realize it is also the most irrelevant. Why am I here? Our world is coming crumbling down. The coons are coming. You have to understand that white America has an uncanny way of making the victim the victimizer. Excuse me, master, for putting my head in the way of your club. Not that your club is brutalizing my head and putting hickeys on it. My head got in the way of your free swing and broke your shiny stick, and I want to apologize for that. Your life is the sum of a remainder of an unbalanced equation inherent to the programming of the Matrix. You are the eventuality of an anomaly which, despite my sincerest efforts, I have been unable to eliminate from what is otherwise a harmony of mathematical precision. While it remains a burden assiduously avoided, it is not unexpected and thus not beyond a measure of control, which has led you inexorably here. There are more connections in the human body than there are stars in the galaxy. We possess a gigantic network of information to which we have almost no access. The matrix is older than you know. I prefer counting from the emergence of one integral anomaly to the emergence of the next, in which case this is the sixth version. Five months before me. There are only two possible explanations. Five months before Either no one told me. Where no one knows. Precisely. As you are undoubtedly gathering, the anomaly is systemic, creating fluctuations in even the most simplistic equations. You control me! I'm gonna smash you to fucking you. You. you can't make me do anything like my trick! Choice. The problem is choice. Let us remember that we are not brutalized because we're Baptists. We're not brutalized because we're Methodists. We're not brutalized because we're Muslims. We're not brutalized because we're Catholics. We're brutalized because we are black people in America. Because white people made him to be what he is. They made him to look evil because that's their role, to make all of us black people to look evil. 
and to hate our sin. I can't hate you. You're a nigga till you die. If you're a poor nigga, you're a poor nigga. If you're a rich nigga, you're a rich nigga. But you never stop being a nigga. And if you get to be educated, you're just an educated nigga. Well, I'm told every day I'm on air that I'm racist because I call out racism. That is maddening to me, and I'm crying about it because it's crazy. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is teaching you and I and trying to tell the white man to get this powder keg out of his house. Let the black man separate from his house. Let the black man have his own house. Let the black man have his own land and his own property. I thought the bitch was white! Damn it! I thought the bitch was white! That's true. I think that white people are so guilty uh, knowing what they've done to black people, uh, that they feel if the uh, deeds were reversed, they would re they would hate the black man if he had done the same thing to them. So it's actually, uh, it reflects a guilt complex on the part of whites when they r ask us, do we hate them? Uh, and if you notice, Uncle Sam has formed a habit of going all over the world. And he calls it the ugly American or the American image. He thinks that everybody hates him because it's a guilt complex. And uh, if you, you know, if you think that if you uh, are worried about Europeans hating you, and they're your allies and your cousins. Well, naturally, it would uh, follow for you to think that Negroes in this country would hate you, uh, especially in light of what has been done to black people in this country by white people. We now, check it out. The white ball dominates everything, right? It knocks the shit out the yellow ball, the red ball, right? And the game's over when the white ball drives the black ball completely off the table. But you have to see that all of this is hypocrisy. I love Malcolm. Malcolm called me the Sunday that he died. I was working Basin Street East. He said, Brother Greg, you, 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 you coming by today. And I said, Malcolm, I love you. And I said, I love you so much. I don't even want to take a chance to be there. He said, what do you mean, Brother Greg? I said, well, I closed tonight, Sunday night in Basin Street East. And I said, but I had my wife book me a flight into Chicago at 8 o'clock this morning. And I'm going to Chicago, and I had uh, way beneath my salary book me into a college about 10 miles from the airport. And I'm going to go there and speak this afternoon, and I'm going to stay there until they tell me you did. Because I'm not going to let this government get two of us for the price of one. And I'm going to call Adam Clayton Powell when I finish talking to you and beg him not to come there. Because today, the United States government is going to get you.